Florida is a sitting duck for intense storms. Now a hurricane moving in from the east-southeast, moving towards the west-northwest, similar to Hugo, is estimated to cause more than $10 billion worth of damage across our area here in South Florida. Hugo is not quite as powerful even as this hurricane is right now. And we know there were billions and billions of dollars, upwards of 10 billion altogether, or 6 billion, I think, in South Carolina alone. So I think that we should expect that the damage in Florida will be greater than that. We've lost power around the area. We're running on generator power now, but uh, the situation is we're starting to see some damage even around the hotel we're at. It is literally incomprehensible the amount of damage that it's going to do. From the Weather Channel, a special presentation. In the last days of August, Hurricane Andrew bore down on the Florida coast. Across Florida and into Louisiana, Andrew cut a swath of destruction. The hurricane would eventually become the costliest natural disaster in yeah. U.S. history. This hurricane Andrew has power now, but... So it, it has bottomed down. The, the, the weather channel out. tracked the storm and followed its trail during the dark days of August. The business of the meteorologist is to tell the future, and we do fairly well. But on August 14th, a tropical disturbance left the coast of Africa and began its journey west. It would become the first named storm in the Atlantic tropical season, Andrew. And in those early hours, the havoc it would bring to southern Florida is a catastrophe no one could have foreseen. We picked up uh the wave that became Andrew about 10 days before it got to Miami. Now about three days after that we began to see the banding features on the satellite picture that told us that a depression was developing and it actually became a depression just on the 17th which is a week before it uh, got to Miami and actually it became a tropical storm later that same day. We're looking at a very real threat of a destructive hurricane hitting uh, the east coast of Florida within the next 48 to 72 hours. Uh, In its brief history, Andrew had almost broken up, reformed, whetted its appetite on the Bahamas, and strengthened to a Category 4 hurricane with winds exceeding 130 miles per hour. By August 23rd, it was headed straight for the Florida coast. Well, it may still be a bit too early to start mentioning specific cities and times of landfall in the year. We really need to convey the sense of danger here. That's accelerated in forward speed now, so... Yeah. Yeah, pre dawn hours on Monday. Without airing specific cities just yet, I would pull out all the stops as far as making sure people get the sense of the threat that is, is developing here. Yeah. It had been 1965 since a major hurricane had struck the Miami area. Now, as the storm approached the mainland, residents of southern Florida, most of whom had never experienced hurricane force winds, began the task of preparing for the unimaginable. Landfall of the first Category 4 hurricane in nearly 30 years. Oh yeah, it's just to keep things from smashing through the window. Uh, our signs are going to destroy. in the Weather Channel Forecast Center. We continue to watch a major hurricane head toward the southeast coast of Florida. That's Hurricane Andrew. Latest positions we have... As Here at the, the Weather Park Channel, Park there was a growing hurricane sense of urgency as, as the storm see, approached the mainland, storm, while a three-person crew fronted by the Weather Channel's Dennis Smith was already on the scene in South Florida. At the uh, 
Uh, Hurricane Andrew will continue to move on in. Some of the high-level clouds that you were seeing on the satellite photograph are just now starting to move in. We still have, it looks like, a lazy... Well, I've always been a little bit concerned uh, about Miami because of its vulnerability. They have a lot of... Uh, As landfall approached, there. we found John and Hope in a rare, quiet moment. People at risk, and they also had a certain mindset. Some people, I'm afraid, that uh, didn't think that uh, this kind of a hurricane was going to come there and because they had not seen one in so many years and been quarter of a century since they had a major hurricane really impact the city. There'll be some damage in the west coast as well, so by the time it cuts the swath all the way across the state, it'll be in billions of dollars for sure. We knew that this would come to pass sooner or later. Because I don't have, my, I don't have too much time here. The eye wall of the hurricane is coming ashore. It's coming ashore right down here in the southern part of Dade County. Uh, just about over Cutler Ridge and Perrine, a little bit north of Homestead. The eye wall, though, extends north uh, into the southern part anyway of Coral Gables. It's going to be very nearly where Dennis is. I'm not sure that Dennis is going to get uh, in, in the calm, but he is going to get under the eye wall. That's it, then. It's making landfall even as we speak. It's making landfall at the time of high tide. We don't know anything about the damage, but we're sure it's going to be substantial. We hope that uh, people did, did what they what they needed to do to protect their lives. We lost power about uh, three hours prior to it making landfall, so it was pitch black. It was dark, so really all you had to rely on was what you could hear more than what you could see. And believe me, what you could hear was plenty. power lines with them, you could hear glass shattering. You could sense something flying by you, and you could sense that there was a lot of destruction going on out there. There were bizarre sights as well. Emmett Williams took this video as he huddled in a motel bathroom at the height of the storm. The winds outside were so powerful, the vacuum had sucked all the water from the toilet. There again. Watch what happens to this toilet paper going in the toilet. It gets sucked down. Wow, a new kind of trash disposal. In South Florida, officials estimate up to 80,000 homes are destroyed. Power is still out. I was praying. I was really praying. I was truly praying. If I never prayed before, I prayed then. I said, this is my first one, and I hope and pray it be my last one. With the new day came a new horror. The city of Homestead had been decimated. Well, the church, well, church bulletins won't make it to churches. <laughs> the grisly score in Florida, 27 dead, more than 250,000 homeless, and property damage amounting to more than $20 billion. The monetary damage from Andrew is still being calculated, and already it is the costliest natural disaster in American history. The emotional damage to the people of South Florida from loss of loved ones, to loss of home, to loss of all those things that give one's life a sense of order and continuity. That damage will be calculated for years to come. And Andrew's reign of terror was not finished. Somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico is gonna have a, uh, in the United States, I'm sure, or is gonna have another landfall of this hurricane before it's over. Hurricane Andrew had cut a path of destruction across southern Florida. The eye of the storm was over land less than four hours, but damage was extensive, and Andrew hadn't finished yet. Forecasters feared that one hurricane could make two landfalls in the United States. John Hope, senior tropical forecaster at the Weather Channel, was tracking the storm. We do think that this was regenerating the Gulf of Mexico, will still be a powerful hurricane, and will strike somewhere along the Gulf Coast. Residents of the Gulf Coast were in for an anxious 48 hours. 
Hurricane watches were posted from Mississippi to Texas. As Andrew progressed, it became evident that Louisiana was at greatest risk. Thousands of people from low-lying areas began to evacuate. For most, the decision was an easy one to make. I'm going to sandbag my little place up and leave. I'm not going to stay in town. I got, a, I got another place further up north, so uh, as soon as I get my little business done right here, it's exactly where I'm going north. I'm not going to wait around. By late Tuesday, Andrew had slowed its forward speed. The eye moved along the Louisiana coast as the storm steering currents weakened. Early Wednesday morning, the hurricane pushed north. And you can see part of the northern sections of the eye now has made landfall there, southwesternmost Terrebonne Parish, area around Morgan City being plastered by very heavy thunderstorms. Uh, winds here along this northern eye wall probably gusting 120, 130, 140 miles an hour. The hurricane force wind started about two hours ago, and we've really been catching the devil here. Uh, everything is flat in the trailer park. Andrew moved through Morgan City, Patterson, and New Iberia. By daybreak, hurricane force wind gusts reached Baton Rouge, some 60 miles from the coast. The Weather Channel's Jim Cantori talked to Captain Ronnie Jones of the Louisiana State Police as Andrew hit. The eye has moved a little bit closer into Baton Rouge, and uh, what we thought it might be the, the worst being over with earlier is not the case at all. People cannot go back to South Louisiana nor to New Orleans at this point. Sit tight, we're not out of this yet. It was just so frightening because you really thought like the wind was gonna rip right through the house. And it was just, it was very frightening. It was very scary. You're just trying to survive. The only thing you can think of is, is how can I protect myself, my family, you know. Uh, possessions don't mean much at that point in time. We started out trying to put buckets up and stuff and at one point you just forget about that and you just protect your, your own life and you just can't think any further than that. In Laplace, a tornado ripped through a subdivision, killing two people. Anthony Rivera and his family had a narrow escape. As soon as we saw the tornado, she panicked, I panicked. We didn't know what to do. So I told her, I said, Nita, come on, let's get in the car, get the kids clothes, I mean, get, get the kids shoes and let's get in the car. But she couldn't find the shoes. Thank God she couldn't find them. Because as soon as she couldn't find them, I told her we don't have no time. So we ran inside the house and no sooner than I was closing the front gate, which that's the front door right there. Right. Yeah, no sooner right than I was closing that, the tornado was tearing these two houses right here up. It was just tearing them up. And then I closed the door and I told everybody in the bathroom, in the bathroom, let's get in the middle bathroom. We all got in the middle bathroom and about two seconds later, just two seconds later, the house was gone. Andrew left 8,000 homes damaged, 25,000 people homeless, 300,000 homes and businesses without electricity. The cleanup started as soon as the hurricane force winds subsided. We knew we, we had a, a lot of work ahead of us and after everybody finished crying and uh, got composed, uh, we went back to work just like you're going to see everybody else in the community will do the same thing. I mean, you have to start over. Starting over is not going to be easy. Andrew destroyed the economic base of the region. The leading cash crop, sugarcane, was heavily damaged. All the farmers could do was watch and wait for Andrew to pass. Total economy is going to be hurt pretty bad. We using, you know, we got 70, 80 farmers in the area here in St. Mary Parish, and uh, we all of us are going to be in the same boat. We've had three years of bad weather. Uh, we had the freeze three years ago, the rain last year, and then of course a hurricane this year. Jim Cantori of the Weather Channel spent time during the hurricane and after it in the heavily affected areas. Everybody was willing to help everybody else. And I mean, there was really a, a camaraderie in Southern Louisiana that uh, I, I've never seen anywhere. And I just think that going to these people's homes and seeing the devastation, trees on their homes, I mean, total roofs blown off, and to see them, you know, almost just, just happy enough to have their family and friends around was, it was just very comforting and heartwarming for me to see that. It's one of those cases where uh, the damage is done, you accept what they have and have to just move on. You just can't just look at it and feel sorry for yourself and, and, and 
more. So you look at it, accept what, what, what was passed on to you and keep going. Andrew dealt a devastating blow to South Central Louisiana. The final figures are not in, but estimates put the damage at $1 billion. It will be a long time before rebuilding is complete. But even when life is back to normal, Louisiana residents will long remember Hurricane Andrew. I think everybody pretty much uh, knows what the story is here. This is, uh, you know, not to exaggerate, but this is the big one. And I'm just going to talk about this frame, give you some perspective, meteorological perspective. When Andrew made landfall in Florida, it was a Category 4 hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. That's about the same strength as Hugo when it hit South Carolina in 1989. Winds in excess of 140 miles per hour, barometric pressures in the low 930s. Andrew covered less area than Hugo, but size is not always a measure of strength. As far as intensity goes, the eye was, was so tight and the pressure was so low and the pressure was dropping so quick. It seems to have done what Gilbert did. The eye got, there was too much energy around the center of the storm, and so the, the tight eye collapsed and now it's forming a, more of an outer eye. And Andrew was, was the most expensive natural disaster in U.S. history, four or five times as costly as Hugo. But was this the big one? Was this as bad as a hurricane can get? To the south of the landfall zone are the Florida Keys, far more vulnerable to storm surge and much harder to evacuate. Or if the storm had struck a few miles to the north, it would have hit downtown Miami or Fort Lauderdale, areas even more heavily populated than South Dade County. As bad as any hurricane may be, it always seems the next one could be worse. Well, as far as the power or strength of the hurricane is concerned, we would have to rate that up among the top four or five hurricanes that have hit the United States, certainly this century. In fact, we've only had two hurricanes that ever hit the U.S. that we would say might have been stronger. One of those was the Keys hurricane of 1935, the Labor Day hurricane, and the other one, Hurricane Camille, that hit up in Mississippi back in 1969. Several days after Andrew made landfall, I asked John Hope to reflect on this monumental hurricane and share his thoughts with us. When Andrew went into Louisiana, it had almost the same intensity as in Florida, yet, at least in terms of dollars, Florida's damage was 20 to 30 times that in Louisiana. What made the difference? There were several factors. One factor was that Hurricane Andrew, when it came into Florida, was coming at a fairly rapid rate of speed, about 17 or 18 miles an hour. It was increasing a little bit when it got to Florida. It moved in very fast, right over populated areas to begin with, before it had a chance to weaken. Well, when it went across Florida then, and went into the Gulf of Mexico, and headed up toward Louisiana, just before the eye of the hurricane got to the coast, it began to slow down. It had been moving about, again, about 18 miles an hour or so and slowed down to seven or eight or maybe even slower. And not only that, the eye tended to start to move parallel to the coast. Now, for a number of hours, the eye was half on the coast and half off. And what this uh, did, it allowed the hurricane to expend quite a lot of its energy over the unpopulated marshland in Louisiana before it finally turned north and at a slow rate of speed and moved up into the populated area. Do you think building standards played a role in the damage in Florida? I can't help but think that they did. Uh, this is going to require quite a lot of investigation. I believe, and my engineering friends tell me, that you can really stress a house to withstand hurricane force winds. There's a very good building code in South Florida and if that is adhered to strictly, I don't think that you'll see massive destruction of houses. And also, I think it's very important in the rebuilding process to make sure that the buildings that are replaced are built according to the code, and the code is rigidly enforced. Given this hurricane's strength, there were certainly not as many deaths as there might have been. How would you account for that? Again, I would have to say that the evacuations played a tremendous role. Remember that the evacuations were the greatest in U.S. history. Uh, we were able to get people out of harm's way that were on the beach were going to be affected by the storm surge. So we had no deaths on that account. And then what we did have were deaths, uh, unfortunately, from the wind itself. And I think that uh, this is the figures that we've seen so far are pretty much in line with what we would expect with the kind of devastation that we saw. And the fact that people knew the hurricane was coming, there were good warnings out for a good long time, 
this hurricane didn't surprise anybody, and they knew also there was going to be a powerful hurricane. With our technology today, do you think death tolls in the hundreds and even in the thousands is a thing of the past? We hope that's a thing of the past, but I don't think there's any guarantee of that. Now, the reason I say that is that people are not always going to be able to get a, as much warning as they got with Hurricane Andrew. And you could envision a scenario in some of these areas because of the congestion. The population has increased a lot faster than the infrastructure has, the roads of access and egress and so on. And you could envision a scenario where people might actually be trapped in their automobiles attempting to evacuate when the storm tide, the storm surge comes up and cuts off the evacuation. That could happen. The impact of a disaster the size of Andrew is difficult to comprehend. Though it missed the heavy populations in Miami, its enormity is still so far beyond the experience of most of us, it overwhelms the imagination. The easiest comparisons are with Hurricane Hugo in South Carolina, a Category 4 hurricane we can all remember well. Hugo missed the city of Charleston, but devastated less populated areas to the north. Ironically, the total population of Charleston, South Carolina is just under 300,000 people. That's just about the number of people Hurricane Andrew left homeless. A scar that deep will last a lifetime.